Can I sing 雪花飘飘？雪花飘飘，北风悄悄。That's it. If there was a five-second video that could perfectly encapsulate what GE 2020 was like, this would be it. But let's take a quick look at how everything went down, right from the initial announcement of the general election. On the 23rd of June at 4 p.m., PM Lee announced that the general election would be happening on 10th of July. Straight away, news of candidates flooded our feeds, though none of them made as dramatic an entrance as much as this guy, the estranged brother of PM Lee. Having breakfast with longtime Kopi buddy Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, who just happened to be the party's leader, Dr. Tan presented Mr. Lee with a PSP membership card, leaving us to wonder if there would be a Lee versus Lee battle in the upcoming elections. But the biggest surprise was probably the reveal of the Workers' Party trailer featuring the upcoming candidates for this GE. The video went viral, with most of the attention given to widely popular ex-NSP member Nicole Xia. Who would wield the hammer for the very first time this GE? People were stunned. Some even took the time to break down the video and decipher just why it was so effective from a PR point of view. The video was short, didn't have any dialogue, and featured a popular politician making a long-awaited comeback. Those alone raised all the online hype that the Workers' Party could have hoped for. As campaigning started to ramp up, so did announcements of retirement from current MPs. Giants in the political scene, including Go Chok Tong, Kaw Boon Wan, Lee Bi Wa, and many others, made way for the new crop of younger, fresher faces. Some of whom didn't have the smoothest entry into local politics. Workers' Party candidate Raisa Khan had a police report filed against her for alleged racist comments on her Facebook page. The internet was divided as some felt she did no wrong and rallied behind her, while others pressured her to bow out of the race. In response, she made an apology for her remarks as her party stood behind her in solidarity as she continued to run for candidacy. Then there was Ivan Lim. The PAP candidate came under fire for his alleged snobbish behaviour, most notably from when he was in the army. Online, tales about his lack of empathy spread like wildfire, and he was even urged by Minister Masago Zulkifli to prove himself. But his response was deemed insufficient, and thanks to unrelenting online pressure. Ivan dropped out of the race before he even got a foot down. One can't help but to wonder what would have happened had he apologized like Raisa did. Would he have dropped out of the race? One thing's for sure: the online mob would have been a lot easier on him. Then came nomination day. At the very last minute, it was announced that DPM Heng would run at East Coast GRC in order to compete with Nicole Sia of the Workers Party, as she was considered one of their biggest threats. He announced his arrival in fine style, and needless to say, the internet had a field day. Once the nominations were done, campaigning began in full flow. Aside from the usual walkabouts, we started to see a lot more social media activity from the various parties. Surprisingly, it was Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, now known as Hype Beast Akong to younger Singaporeans, who slayed everyone else with his IG game. When I saw his first post, I wanted him to be my grandfather. But by the 80th time he called himself a hype beast, it just felt like he was trying a bit too hard. Nevertheless, hype beast Akong lived up to his name. His follower count jumped from under 10k pre-GE to over 70k today. The height of the campaigning period was the televised GE debate between PAP, WP, SDP, and PSP. It was here when the collective cockles of Singaporean hearts were captured by WP candidate James Lim, as he held his own in a debate with Dr. Balakrishnan of PAP. Several fan accounts surfaced on Twitter as Singapore crushed on James' heart. Come election day, the social media coverage received by both James Lim and Raisa Khan was probably one of the main factors which led to a narrow landmark win for WP in Sengkang. And let's not forget PAP's marginal victory over WP in East Coast GRC. Nicole Sia's popularity online and DPM Heng being made the butt of hundreds of memes probably caused for the margin to be a little bit too close for comfort for a man slated to be our next prime minister. This year, we learned how potent social media can be in swinging public opinion and, more importantly, votes. As important as manifestos and promises are, it cannot be denied that the likability of a candidate and their personalities are crucial, and that's where social media does its best work. Combined with large-scale rallies when COVID-19 eventually subsides, there is no doubt that GE 2025 is going to be one hell of a ride.